Okay, so um, this is basically about how I am making a board game, um, which I will show you. And I apologize, the, web sh the website is, I nearly called it a website then, which is a bit of a slip, is <laughs> a bit rough because I'm in the middle of migrating it. And that's kind of the point of this talk. And that's not the right URL. Right? <laughs> <laughs> This is the right one. Okay. So I'm making a board game where you uh, play um, a computer company. And the first version is in 1980s America. Um, you get to basically survive a decade. This is the current manual. Um, and you have resources, which you start with money and you buy um, marketing, research and development and quality. And then there are products that you can make and we're using as much as possible real products. And I've got clearance on a lot of these. So we've got classics like Amigas, Ataris. Uh, this is American, I forget. So there's no European ones yet. Um, Commodore, uh, some more obscure ones, Entex, Halcyon, Magnavox, Odyssey and all sorts of other fun. Uh, sorry? It's England. Yeah. It's an English. No, no, so just American companies, American companies. Oh. But there will be future expansions, don't worry. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so it's just American companies, but that's, that's why. Tandy, there's a, there's a lot in here. And there's also personalities that you can attract. And they're not on here yet because I haven't figured out how to approach real people to ask them if I can use them in a game. It seems a slightly strange one to ask. And there's events as well, things like... Um, uh, so, for example, in the 80s, there was the famous... Um, computer game crash. So if you've got game console products, then you're going to start losing a lot of money for a couple of years in the game, things like that. So it's a physical game. And here's my prototype cards at the moment. Paper, crazy. <laughs> um, and this isn't, I come from an open source software background. Um, so to me, it seemed like the natural thing to make a game was to somehow code it. Uh, which sounds odd, but also because I wanted um, people to be able to collaborate on the game. I wanted to have uh, official uh, releases of the game, but also patches to the game where people could say, you've got a spelling mistake, or that's not historically accurate, you need to change some text and things like that. Um, and then have two versions of the game. One, the print-on-demand version, which people can, I think at the moment in my mind, get for free, and then a sort of professional, properly boxed game like you would normally buy in a shop. Um, open sourcing a game is not actually completely new. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons at 3.5, so about 10 years ago, released an open source version. Um, and Cards Against Humanity, which is a very infamous, offensive party game, also has done the same sort of thing. So it's not a new concept, but I wanted to actually also open source the the process and like everything, basically. <laughs> so... Um, so I'm going to quickly show you some of the ideas behind this and to prove my, where are we, credentials we have. <laughs> yeah, that's my uh, <laughs> other, which one is it? No, that's the old one. <laughs> I cannot. Too many that are really out of date as well. Weird. Okay, we'll find that in a second. <laughs> um, so I initially, because I've always, for years before, I always worked predominantly with um, Drupal. Um, which has its advantages when you're trying to make something that uh, other people can use. And maybe you don't have it public and you're not locked in. Ah, that's a pain. It should be public. That's, thank you for that. <laughs> it really should be. So um, I initially made the website in, in Drupal and I made content types of the cards and the manual pages and game concepts and a whole bunch of other things. And it sort of worked to a point, but I often felt like 
largely at the moment when it was just me, I was fighting the um, I was fighting against the CMS a lot of the time, especially when I wanted to come to doing things like uh, printing output and um, having different versions of print output and things like that. Um, so I had a revelation about a year ago. I started um, working as a an editor on a developer website, editing um, other people's articles, and I got introduced to the wonderful world of Markdown. Um, so they're late to the party, and initially I hated it. I thought, what the earth is this crap? Why well, is this weird mark out, and I can't do anything, and I didn't get it. And then within about two months, I was hooked. And I haven't pretty, pretty much haven't looked back to the point where I use it for almost anything now. Um, and I love the concept, and I'm using this in a few other places as well. Um, this is just one project that is a bit more concrete to demonstrate. I wanted to be able to have the ability to basically write content once and then have it be used in multiple places. Uh, and Markdown kind of lets you do that. And through various frameworks, you can use outputters to PDF and EPUB and audio and all sorts of things. So it seemed like an obvious first step. And actually, once you get people, non-technical people, over the first um, jump of learning how to use something like version control, it's actually quite easy to get people to collaborate on. And so, for example, my, my wife, who is not technical at all, has helped edit a lot of the copy on some of the cards. And um, the advantage of something like GitHub is you can actually just jump in and edit. And she doesn't even have to know what's going on. She's committing to the repository without even realizing. Um, I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do graphical assets yet. But let's... Um, I'll actually... So, and then um, I basically switched the site to Jekyll. Um, static site generator working off of Markdown files. There are others available, but it just seemed the one that had most of the plugins available to me that I needed for the outputs. So I'm going to show you. We have all the um, products here, or the cards, as Markdown files. And I don't know if you have an editor that will... We'll just see what happens. <laughs> That's okay. There we go. So um, I've defined these as content types and um, Jekyll has the concept of collections where you can define uh, sort of extensions of the basic post type and a lot of these fields, shall we call them, um, can be set by default in the configuration file as well. So for example, at the moment, I've only got 80s America. So I've just set that by default because no one's going to change it. But in the future, we might have... 80s Europe or 70s America or 90s Japan or something like that and each card will have a setting but at the moment we don't so they're just defaulted in the config file um, the card text a lot of them is still in um, just lorem ipsum at the moment but various fields of, you're all fairly obvious each one varies slightly um, the type of card it is an image the costs to make the scores you get for um, building it and legal as well, because <laughs> I wanted to cover my base. So on, on the real products, we have legal disclaimers about who owns the trademark, because unfortunately, most of them are still owned by somebody. There's a couple that aren't, but it's the most are. Uh, and then... You have... Layouts for each content type. Yep. So uh, Jekyll is Rails, although to be honest with you, the, the great thing about going down this process is I've actually simplified my coding and I can focus on the content, which is sort of what I want to do. The coder in me wants to go and play with things, but I haven't actually had to too much. And this is sort of one of the things I ended up doing with, with when I had it in Drupal a lot, was just forcing myself against the framework. Whereas actually, I can generally just focus on content here and the, the code is pretty much just template stuff that I have to think about, with maybe a few other aspects. Um, so we have just the card layout. It's pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Um, up the top here is the Pandoc we're using for converting the uh, Markdown to other formats. So at the moment, just PDF. And then the various fields and uh, the way the card looks at the moment. This is a good example, hopefully. That's my test image. We have some text, the cost, the scores, and then the legal disclaimer. At the moment, the PDFs, as I said, I've just migrated this, are a little um, 
limit lacking. They don't have everything that is needed yet. But so I've not used Ubuntu for quite a while. So here we go. Okay. So for example. Yeah, at the moment it's just very default title and the text. I need to play around with the layout. And that's the one difference of using something like Pandoc. It uses a uh, very different markup language for layout, which is a bit new to me. <laughs> so I haven't quite figured yeah, it out. Yeah, <laughs> which I haven't quite figured out yet. So maybe I should talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> um, so. That's, I guess, largely it. The, it's, it's amazing because it's so simple. And this is, this is sort of what I wanted, the stage I wanted to get to, in that all I have to do is write cards, push them to GitHub, other people can collaborate on them. We can have a bunch of um, post hooks on GitHub to create formats and things like that. And that's it. And compared to what I was doing before, when sometimes I'd push up features and spend two hours figuring out why the feature wasn't live, it was, it was, it's like, wow, I could actually just focus on writing the game. Um, so sometimes simplicity actually just is amazing and doing the easiest thing is, is, is the best option. And uh, I've, yeah, I'm loving it. And I have some other examples of other things I've sort of gone down this path with. Um, and that's it. And I wish I could show you the uh, GitHub repository, but it's probably not public, which is good because it really should be. Um, yeah. I think that's largely me done. Um, if you're interested in uh, helping out with the game, then, um, well, I'd say go to GitHub, but you can't quite yet. <laughs> so maybe tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, jump in and um, lend a hand. And uh, I, I'm interested to see what other formats you can get this to. And I would like, love the process to almost be as, like, if I could figure out a way of getting the material to, a, like, a game printer in the same way as well. So I have to do, like no more work, but that comes further down the line. <laughs> and they might be confused by that. But, <laughs> but um, thanks very much. We are.